Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I've just got the slides still have the ink wet on them, and we are going to go live on TikTok at the same time. Can you hear and see me loud and clear? Let me know that indeed you can. There's ample opportunity to post questions. Uh, Apologies once again that I was a little bit late. We have got so much to get through uh, that I am going to share my screen immediately uh, with you. Okay, so weekly stock market update, as well as why people's pensions and savings absolutely stink. Alan, bonjour, Mark, Peter, hello. Uh, And I'm going to update. So Jeff, Edward, Barry, John, Nigel, David, Matt, Mitchell, Robert, as Gavin, Leonardo, Kevin, Stan, Howard, Alan, Carl, Kashif, and everybody else. Uh, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, so... Uh, good. It's all working well. These are some of the problems we're going to discuss. So we're going to do it in this in two parts. One is the stock market update. And you can see and hear me loud and clear and on TikTok too. Okay, so one part is the stock market update. And the other part is actually why, what can we do to improve it, right? Uh, and these are the problems that I'm going to address in this, and they're worth repeating. These are the major problems I've received from the emails I've got from people. I took a sample of 100 emails, and these were the things which kept coming up. It doesn't add to 100 because sometimes people had more than one problem. Pension, low returns over the past five to six years. So we're going to look at that, what this year might do to help resolve that. IFL wealth manager, clueless or useless common words. I don't know how to sack my IFA, very common issue. In fact, some people are happy to keep taking losses because they're too afraid to sack their IFA. It's a very British thing to do. Mithun, you're in India. Welcome, Peter, from Dublin. Yeah, let me know where you're from. Malaga, Jeffrey. Yes, we met Jeffrey. We met in person. Hi, uh, Carwin as well. Fantastic. Pinner, the most exotic one on here, Barry. Uh, And then there was people who were afraid to do it themselves. So we're going to resolve all of these issues in this call, all right? And then there's also things like my IFA does spray and pray with dozens of funds. You bet they do. They're clueless. This is a measure of valuation. So look, the market is overvalued at the moment, but it's been overvalued for well over a year. This is share price compared to future expected profitability. Now, if you look at this, It tells you a couple of things, given that stock prices are rising, that valuation is not the only way to measure whether a stock is going to rise because there's revenue growth, there's momentum, for instance, there's dividend yields. And price to forecast earnings might not be the only way either. That's what it tells you. Whereas you get a lot of people going, oh, the market's overvalued, about to crash. Well, and they sit on the sideline and the train, which is the market, leaves the station and they think, oh, pull back, it'll come back. Oh, it's going bye-bye train and they miss it. So we know there's multiple ways of measuring things as well, right? So we're going to look at all of that. Uh, And uh, as you can see with these, and Ravi, you've mentioned NVIDIA, I'll come to that in a second. There's Broadcom and there's all of these. So I'm going to go through some of the tech and semiconductor software applications. But also, where is the value then? Well, are we going to get a rotation into healthcare, which looks relatively cheap, or maybe even into energy? So we'll cover that as well in this, or maybe into banks, which look cheap, some of the financial services. After all, they look cheap, and we'll cover telecom services as well, because we might feel safer. Or should we just stick to the tech stocks, which are going, as they say on social media, to the moon? Remember the term YOLO? You only live once. (laughs) Nuts. This is the markets over the past year, just to put everything into a bit of a context for you. And what you can see there, I'm just going to move my TikTok version closer. What you can see there with the market over the past year is, of course, Microsoft up 66% was your pension. Apple, 38%. Amazon, 62%. Alphabet, 50%. Meta, 175%. Even Eli Lilly on the healthcare side, up 85 So what should we do? If we've already owned them, do we continue holding them? And if we don't own them, is it too late to get in? Tesla's up 50% over the past year. Netflix 55. We're going to go through a whole load of these. Okay. And also I'll mention which ones I happen to own as well. Okay. So we're going to go through all of this. Good question, Stan. Is it a repeat of 1999? Most people on here won't even remember 99. Uh, So we will cover that. By the way, look, even down here, some of the smaller companies service now 75%. Uber, what's that? 100% uh, as well. So what does it? I know some people are going to look at this and then they're going to look at their pension. Then they're going to look at this. Then they're going to look at their pension. They're going to say, they're going to say to their spouse, get that bloody IFA on the phone. He's sacked. 
it's usually a he. Right. Now, what we're going to do uh, during the course of this webinar, we're not just going to look at value growth. We will look at those factors. I need, when I go through 10,000 companies, which are all the ones eligible to be in my pension or SIP or ISA, I need the value box ticked. I need the growth box. Now, you've been told a big lie that, oh, well, you can either go value or you can go growth. Well, it's, it's absolute nonsense. They're only telling you that because either they're idiots or they're trying to sell you more things. You can have a company which is undervalued and growing. Growth means revenue growth, profit growth. Undervaluation means share price relative to profitability. They're not incompatible. But your average IFA doesn't know that because, well, they're reading books from the 1930s. Now, we're also going to look at cash return on capital invested. I need companies to be in the top quartile. It's a formula used by Goldman Sachs Wealth Management. Give them 50 million and they'll do it for you. Uh, and companies in the top quartile generate 30% per annum. Not every year and not every company in the top quartile. So last year, loads did. But then again, we had the tailwind of the NASDAQ going up 55% and the S&P going up 25%. But in years like 2008, nothing did that because guess what? The markets fell. Uh, so it's the average return is 30% per annum. If you're in the top quartile by cash return on capital invested, then you've got momentum. I want to see them having gone up over the last six months. Uh, Sortino and Alpha. Okay, you can Google those if you wish. Now, those first five columns have to be all green. So as you can see, there's relatively few stocks out of 10,000 that meet that. It's actually about 200 out of 10,000 which meet that criteria and are worthy of being in my portfolio. In fact, it's probably easier to marry me than it is to be in my portfolio. It's that exclusive a club. Now, how's the past week gone? Well, it's it's actually been a fairly broad week in the sense that it's not just been tech, TMT, telecoms, well, forget media, telecoms and uh, technology. Uh, it's not just been that because you've actually had the banks and financial services. And the broader it is, probably the happier we all feel because we feel it's a bit more comfortable that we're getting so many companies uh, uh, going up. But yeah, it, I'm relieved that the tech companies are carrying on from last year because it's good for my pension. And I'd rather it wouldn't turn out to be like 2002, which was my genuine concern at the start of January, that we might end up like a 2002 as well. Okay, um, Stan, back it in. Stan goes, should I three times meta tomorrow? Stan, you need to go to a you need to go to a, a Vegas, right? So, uh, uh, right, what does that mean? And Verizon, uh, sorry, Verizon keep doing the British thing. Verizon, which was one of my picks from start of the year, is doing good. Good start for the past week. But we'll go through some more of these. But overall, I, what I'd like to say is I'm I'm happy with how the market's turning out so far this year. It's only been three weeks, but I'm relieved it's not 2022, which was my biggest concern that the market would uh, end up falling off a bit of a cliff. This is what happened in 2022 with Meta. You can see dropped 80%. Uh, we got out of Meta well early. Uh, so didn't suffer that fall, unlike funds, because we saw the momentum falling. And you know my rules for momentum. I'm going to describe them and why we'd got out of Meta back then and then back into January because January 2023, because all the all the numbers hit value, growth, income, cash flow. By the way, exchange traded funds, I will do separate videos on this on YouTube, and I've already done some on YouTube. Uh, sometimes people say, I can't find the videos. I do a lot of videos each week, okay? Uh, and you can see which exchange trade funds if you're into less volatility and the technology one. So just in uh, my very first column, in, not my first column, so one of my columns in the Financial Times, about 20 odd years ago, I wrote about exchange traded funds when hardly anybody was using them 20, 25 years ago. This is the market's year to date, not really much to write home about. Okay, the S&P's up 2%, NASDAQ's already up 3.4%, and the UK markets are down 3%. So three weeks into the year, and the American markets and the British markets have a 6% differential already. Your pension is depleting if you're tracking any of the UK markets, and it's already up 3.4% into the third week of January. Uh, so 1% for every week of the year so far, which is what it did last year on the NASDAQ. It went up 1% on average for every week of the year. Uh, so, well, you can see why in my first Financial Times column in 1999, I wrote, I'm selling all my UK holdings and only buying US ones. Okay, that's the poll. Will the FTSE be higher by the end of the year? Most of you think so. Good for you. Uh, let's have a look at something more important and consequential, which is, will the Dow be higher? So I'm putting a poll on the screen as well. And I'll answer these questions as I go through. Thank you for the questions. I will do those. Now, 
markets over the past year. So if, like me, you've been NASDAQ heavy, you've had a very good year, uh, your pension might be up, I don't know, 48, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. Uh, if you've been more S&P 500, more balanced, it might be up 20, 25, 30, 40 uh, percent. And if you've been uh, a UK pensioner focused just on UK stocks as opposed to, because you know your SIP and ISA can hold US stocks, but if instead you just kept with fund managers in the UK, uh, you probably made no money. But that's fine because, I don't know, maybe you don't like making money. I don't know. Anyway, they're ruining your pension. And last year was really clear that they were doing that. And when I wrote this, okay, published by Paul Grove Macmillan, so most of my books are published by the Financial Times or Macmillan. When I wrote this that many years ago, see where the video, where the camera is, okay, uh, I highlighted all of these problems. Guess what? That was written 24 years ago. That was written 24 years ago, and I highlighted the problems back then about uh, what the errors are, secrets from the inside. Yeah, uh, before I set up, even before I set up the hedge fund, that this is the problem, you're getting this, and it's not changed in a quarter of a century, right? Top stocks in the S&P 500, I'll mention some of these, I'll go through some of these. Uh, don't just jump on just because they're uh, running. As you know, as I've already said, this is over the uh, past month, uh, Verizon I own, uh, as you will already know, I own NVIDIA as well. Palo Alto Networks is, uh, the CEO is a friend of mine, but I don't own Palo Alto Networks stock, uh, Nika Sharora. We were on the board of a company together in the UK. There's another story. Now, Juniper Networks, that was one of the ones which had shot up, up 26%. You can see this. And so people have been asking me, so I thought I'd cover it. Would I get in? No, I just, uh, I, I need to look more at what happened there and I want to see it break out from above this. So at the moment, no, it's not a special situation. Those of you who are on my great investments program will know I sometimes do special situations. This is not on there because whilst there is potential for momentum, I need to check what the heck's going on with the company, why that's jumped up. And uh, so, you know, I'd had a couple of emails if I'd have a look at it. I'd really need it to break out above that anyway to begin with. So there we go. But it's also instrumental. It tells you, well, we didn't pick it here. We should have done, could have done, couldn't. There you go. We don't get, we don't um, pick every single one. Uh, now, Palo Alto was one of the big risers. And as you've seen, it just tends to do this. And you might say, hey, bloody hell, there's a clue. I'll just keep hold of that and just buy and forget. That's up to you. I wouldn't do that. I am somewhat concerned that it's a bit overbought. Now, it could keep going up and up and up. Of course it could. Uh, my concern is it might end up doing this. And I'd rather look for things which are not so overbought because I don't want to have a year of it going downwards. So for me, no, at the moment with Palo Alto Networks, doesn't mean it's going to fall. I'm just saying I've got alternatives where they're not so overbought. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Broadcom, same reason, okay? There are uh, alternatives which aren't so overbought. So I know you might think it'll just go up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know you see all these banks, including Goldman, saying bye. Uh, well, my concern is we get a down year in it. Now, there's no indication that should happen at the moment, and I think it might go higher. But if I've got two stocks or I've got a choice between something which is at the bottom of its trending cycle, I'd rather take that than something which is near the high. So I'm afraid that's a no. What are the bottom stocks over the past month? Look at this. Uh, Tesla down 17%. As you know, I got out of that in October, September, October time. Uh, and the others I don't have anyway, but it just goes to show you just how bad the markets can be. I suspect a lot of your fund managers have quite a few of those as well. Okay, thank you for the questions. Keep them coming. I will have a look at them and I'll answer all of them before we go. Okay. Uh, FTSE, I don't have any of these anyway, but I'm just showing them out of interest to you if you want to have a look at what's been doing well and why it might have done well. Okay, and what hasn't been doing so well? Bloody watches of Switzerland. Uh, JD Sports, bloody hell. These are real close brothers, asset managers. I think there is a flood of money leaving uh, fund management in the UK. Look, Jupiter Fund Management's down 18%. And I think it's leaving it because people like me keep telling them how bloody rubbish they are. I can't take all the credit for um, asset management in the UK, fund managers depleting, but they just keep producing rubbish for their clients. And so what do you expect? Let's have a look at the S&P 500. Now, 
I it's a market update. I am positive on this. I expect the momentum. For those who are new to this, uh, my great investments program people will be familiar with this. But for those who are new to this, MACD monthly uh, moving average convergence divergence. Uh, I'm happy for that to continue rising. I think it'll do that potentially, like it did there. That's my bullish estimate for the year. Okay, that's the bullish estimate now the base case would be that obviously and the bear case would be somewhere like that but i'm not worried about those at the moment uh that's the bull case that's what i think 25 percent to the upside now you might think are you nuts i know i know i'm just projecting as they often say on social media alpesh you're projecting yes i'm just projecting based on the momentum nothing else as things stand how about the FTSE? well pfft, look like it's falling again Thanks very much. Hey, but don't worry, it's at 2016 levels. And here's something new you might not know. Do you know how much the FTSE 100 has gone up since 1999 to today? About 6.7%. Not per annum, not per annum. I mean, in total, in the last quarter of a century, and the FTSE 100 has gone up 6.7%. 100 largest UK companies, market cap has gone up 6.7%. Okay, the FTSE 100 index. Obviously, some companies have gone in, some out of that index. The index is up 6.7%. Uh, guess what most fund managers for UK pensioners track? FTSE 100. So they're happy because they're going, yeah, well, we're crap. I know that. But look, we're following, we're tracking a crap benchmark. So our crapness is disguised by the crap target that we're handling. And by the way, don't even think about retiring if you're in a workplace pension with a fund manager who's given you mainly UK funds. Just don't even think about retiring uh, because that's what they're doing to you. Right? Oh, you're not getting any of that. Oh, no. You could have because legally you're allowed to in the UK own US equities, but you're not getting any of that. Fund managers are keeping the good stuff for themselves. NASDAQ, again, should be a positive year in this. We should continue getting that up. I'm just saying it the way I see it. Now, don't forget, there will be periods. Look at that. Even in an up year where you will get a couple of down months, you will get a couple of down months. I can't see myself panicking during those because the trend uh, is so clearly upwards. Apple, let's have a look at that. Now, remember, I didn't just look at the charts. I looked at value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha, those things that I showed you earlier on the Excel spreadsheet. And because I looked at all of those juicy, juicy, juicy things, um, I'm going to try and pull that up in a second. And the things we look at, I'll show you the spreadsheet. Uh, so for those who are on the Great Investments Program, you'll be familiar with it. Let's not forget, we'll have gone through all of this. None of these make the mark, by the way. None of these are good enough to be because uh, the value growth income cash flow is just too low. Okay, they have some greens, not enough. So not good enough to be in. You really have to be. Uh, it's probably harder to get into Oxford University than it is to get into my portfolio. Now, Apple, where are we on that? Well, look, if it was rising, that'd be bullish. If this was rising, the monthly MACD. If it's going sideways, it's a bit amber. If it's falling, double amber. If it's falling beneath its own moving average, like there, then that's a red because look what could happen. Uh, but at the moment, we're fine. Nothing to do. Remember, these are longer-term 12-month holdings, so there's nothing to do with Apple. Uh, I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't really care what the analysts think. If the average analyst was right, you'd only get a 2% return. Uh, but the high analysts uh, thinks it could go to 250 from its current 195. Don't care. Probably right. Uh, Alphabet, I'm afraid there's some things because some of my great investments program people say, hey, you're giving too much away. You're showing too much leg to the public. So uh alphabet's private client microsoft well i'm happy with that no issues uh the the issue with this one is it's going sideways nothing to do can wait there you go okay amazon also sorry great investments program for those who are on the great investment program some of you on here are on there you'll get the private longer version with all of this and what i would buy um later on the private telegram channel Disney, that was a special situation from there. It seems to be recovering a bit now. Uh, and there we go. And special situation, remember, are those which don't quite meet all the criteria on here. However, for other reasons, suggest that they could, over at least 12 months, give me potentially a 40% return, and that would not be unreasonable. So that was a special situation from earlier. Uh, don't forget my YouTube channel where, you know, things like why your pension fund manager should be locked up. 
I present on there. Meta. Now, I want to show you Meta for a couple of reasons. First of all, remember, that's a bit overbought. So I continue holding this from there because in January it was, uh, of last year, 2023, and I put it on Telegram. Then it was on our approved filtered list, met all the criteria. The reason we'd got out of it here, and it's something to teach you, is in January of 2022, before it fell 80%, it's not because we knew it was going to fall 80%. I didn't know that. I didn't think it'd fall that far. It was simply because uh, the monthly MACD, I don't hold things. Uh, that was red. I don't hold things where the MACD has fallen below its signal line on the monthly. So that was get out of it. Now, that doesn't usually happen. Uh, it, in fact, rarely happens. So all these gains that your fund manager, like Scottish Mortgage and Fundsmith, had in these types of stocks, snakes and ladders, right? Six years, the markets took the stairs on the way up. They say the market takes the stairs on the way up and the elevator on the way down. And then within one year, because they can't hold cash, they're only at all 5% cash by their mandate, they took you back over six years. They lost six years' worth of gains in your pension in one year. In fact, Scottish Mortgage is down 50%. 50% from there, and it hasn't recovered. And then what happened the subsequent year when you say to them, hey, hey, that meta that you kept bragging about for six years, it's up 250% this past 12 months. How, how are we doing? And they'll say, oh, we got a 0% return over the last 18 months because we're just back where we were. And the main problem is they can't get in to cash, okay? Uh, that's one problem. The other problem is they have so much capital and so much uh, entrenched into their belief system that they have too big an ego to get out in the first place. Um, okay, so that's what we are with that. Yes, yeah, and Disney, I've still got, it's a wait. Um, so the strategy with this remains, obviously, like with NVIDIA, if it drops X percent, because it is overbought and I continue holding it and we've got a fat position on it, if it drops X, we will sell Y. Uh, and that will depend on your risk aversion. So you might say X is 10%, in which case you might sell 0% if you're risk loving, or you might sell 50% if you're risk averse. Uh, and you might say, well, if it drops 20%, I'll sell Y. Okay. Now it's going to differ between you and me because we've got different risk appetites. Just right. So you might be very risk averse. I might be very risk loving, but we'll work out as, as and when anything happens, what to do with it. But at the moment, it continues being a hold. Similar strategy with Nvidia. Uh, great investments program, people, I'll show you later, but similar strategy. Now, you'll know with Tesla, it was a special situation at the start of last year, which was on Telegram. And then in October or September, I can't remember which I got out of it uh, when it dropped. And of course, it rose afterwards. I said, that's fine. I'll continue covering. I'm still out of it. And now it's falling off again. And um, well, that's just amber. I mean, it's just a bit neutral. Nothing to comment about. Might become a special situation again. We'll see. But at the moment, I it's not. And I'm not planning on putting it in. So there you go. Similar with service now. Continue uh, uh, to give my comments on that on the Great Investment site a little bit later on. Special situations like Intel they've now come to their 12-month period. Remember, it's a 12-month period. 14th of January has passed. Uh, it was up 54% by the 29th of December. I don't know what happened by the 14th, but when it, when we exited, uh, that was that's just a screenshot from uh, the private Telegram channel. So 242 of you saw it only. Flipping heck. Um, so you, the rest of you missed out on that 54% gain. But 242 of you may well have captured some of it, and then that was end of the year. Okay, and that's the reason why the Telegram's really important. Netflix, I don't own, as I've told you, but I said at this point, I'm going to start covering it because it's a popular company. People relate to it, and it will help me educate you. And that continues being, a, and they've had their results, and I think the results were pretty good. So, uh, yeah, still on target for that. I'm not saying it's going to do that. We'll see what happens, but it's doing well uh, on the way. Now, PayPal, ugh, right, still flatlined over there. So, you know, PayPal's not one to even think about until it's well past this downward trend line, probably closer to 70, 80. Uh, they just need to change management. When they change management and sack their board and uh, improve their, uh, their back end of their website, they're about as rubbish in their website as British Airways is or Lloyd's Bank is. OK, and you'll know when they start improving some of that, that actually it'll be a turnaround. Uh, but for the moment, it's a sort of ugh. OK, uh, and by the way, don't forget the YouTube channel. There's a million views 
in aggregate I've achieved on there. You'll also see why your pension fails. And I go through specific fund managers and you can put in their, um, which funds you'd like me to look at, like Scottish Investment Trust. And I give ratings on them based on uh, uh, how bad they are. Now, I'm also going to cover things which are popular with hedge funds, but not for me. General Electric is not for me. I think it's a bit overbought, but it's popular with hedge funds. I'm mentioning it, and I think it's more like this scenario. Okay, so big names like that, I'm happy to mention. Cisco, I mentioned it last time. Not for me, but it doesn't look bad, and it's popular with hedge funds, and I've mentioned it there, and I've said, well, potentially it could do this. I can't buy everything, so I've not bought this one. It's not one I own, but it's one I'll cover, a bit like Netflix, just for the educational purposes, and it's it's a name you've not heard of on the flip side. Okay, I hadn't heard of it, but I thought I'd cover it because it's popular with the funds. Uh, I can't buy everything, but it's it's there just to give you a bit more uh, breadth in education. Don't also forget on my LinkedIn right? And by the way, if you want to find all of these things, all these links, I've mentioned YouTube and LinkedIn and everything else, alpishpatel.com forward slash links. They're all on there. alpishpatel.com forward slash links, forward slash links. They're all on there. On my LinkedIn, I summarize economic outlooks, the top 10 takeaways from every single investment bank and fund. Uh, and I've been given a top voice, me and Bill Gates. As I say each week, party at his place to celebrate. Uh, and you're going to love all of this. Uh, stuff as well. So let's go to the pensions and then the Q&A, okay? These are the main problems people are saying. Pension low returns over one or five years. Now, why is that? Now, I've given you one answer to that, which is fund managers tend to divide the capital into small restrictive pockets. Like they will say, okay, we're going to have British funds. We're going to have growth funds. We're going to have value funds. So they're picking from a narrow gene pool, whereas I pick from a gene pool of 10,000 equities. And I say, well, we know from Nobel Prize winning literature, which I've written about in my Financial Times columns and in my books, right, Eugene Famer, Richard Thaler, and Daniel Kahneman, we know from them that one of the reasons why private investors underperform, fund managers underperform, and and also uh, what moves stock prices is the fact that we're looking at too small a group of uh, equities. You're picking for a narrow gene pool, so we pick from 10,000. And what moves stock prices? Well, we know that undervalued companies, see that bit there? Undervalued companies tend to perform better than overvalued ones. We know that from the historical data, but it's not guaranteed and there are exceptions. Similarly, growing companies, growing profits, growing revenues tend to do better and similarly dividend paying ones. So what we did is we said, well, wait a minute. All algorithms are what's important, how important is it? So we know now value, growth and income are important for stock price movements. They don't guarantee everything will go up, but they help. Okay. And we know value is twice as important as growth is twice as important dividend yields because the academic research proves it. So we took that from academia. We took Crokey from Deutsche Bank Wealth Management and Goldman Sachs Wealth Management because we know companies in the top quartile generally produce as a basket 30% per annum, not every year and not every stock in the basket. Okay. So as a general, as a basket, they do it. Right. And then these other things. And I want all five of those to be green. And you can see when I scroll down here, none of these are. I haven't shown you a single one on here, which is, it just shows you how few are. All of these are eligible to be mine, SIP and ISA, but only 200 out of 10,000 make it. Now, the reason I make that point is because most people will pick from name recognition and the academic research shows it, or they'll pick from, oh, I heard somebody at a pub say something. That is a pretty bloody poor way to uh, treat your pension, which should be treated with a lot more respect. And then on top of that, to avoid these problems, what we say is we're going to hold for 12 months because we've got undervalued high growth companies. So after 12 months, like fruit, they should be over ripened, overshot, and we should start the process again, right? So you get those big returns in a short period of time, 12 months, not under 12 months, not over. And then you start again, because you've got 10,000 to choose from. And if you become risk averse during that period, like you saw with Meta in 2022, you might say, right, we'll sell. But that happens once every six years. That insurance policy of we might have to sell uh, uh b b before the 12 months are up happens about once every six years okay this is the problem people have got you've got ifas who do spray and pray they just put it into everything now if you look at the portfolios of the billionaires like warren buffett bill gates they've actually concentrate their wealth in a few holdings the reason for that is they know what they're doing IFAs haven't got a bloody clue, which is why they spray and pray. No strategy, and then they underperform. Eugene Famer got a Nobel Prize in economics for showing how IFAs underperform. They put it into dozens of funds. Somebody sent me a fund portfolio today where 
their wealth manager was charging them to put the money into a fund and that fund had put it into a basket of other funds. And it was like, okay, how many layers of uh, expense is there? People holding on too long and not knowing when to let go is another problem. I've just told you 12 months or it drops 25% from the highest it's been since you bought it or you become risk averse and you sell a bit sooner. And the risk aversion depends on, as I showed you, the meta example was a good one in 2022. It's an ideal one. If it drops X, you sell Y based on your risk appetite. It's that simple. And you only need to monitor your portfolio once every two weeks. The IFA is giving you 0% returns even when the NASDAQ's up 55%. And they'll say, oh, yeah, because we weren't measuring the NASDAQ. Our benchmark was emerging markets. Well, why the bloody hell was it emerging flipping markets when the NASDAQ's going up 55%? Oh, well, well we want it to be diversified, have a bit of everything, because then some things go up, some go down. All right, okay, you're just playing darts with my money then, right? That's the problem, playing darts with your money. And most people are too scared to sack the IFA because they've got all these shiny certificates. I've got more certificates and qualifications than any IFA any of you have ever met, right? And if you want a certificate measuring competition, I can tell you they're a bunch of idiots. I've never met a clever one. You're wasting a lot of time and energy and, of course, confusion, because you're then thinking, what should we do? Well, actually, we're in the age of spreadsheets. Just flip and put all the data into one place and tick all the boxes. That's all of it, okay? Uh, I have people helping me collect all the data. If we put them all in a room, <laughs> the room would look this messy. That's the only thing. The room would actually look this messy. I'm trying to think what I've got on my desk. By the way, I love this. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? The, the drink. Um, but anyway, yeah, my room would be that messy. So. It's 40%. I mean, Goldman Sachs Wealth Management, when I went to, I had lunch with uh, Jim O'Neill when he was chairman of Goldman Sachs Wealth Management about 15, 16 years ago. And then subsequently, he became my chairman at Chatham House when I was on the investment committee by coincidence. And Chatham House is the world's second, um, uh, number two uh, think tank on international relations after Brookings. So, and the patron is His Majesty the King. So it gives you some idea of, you know, he was chairman. When I went to Goldman Sachs to have lunch with, it, he pulled out their quantum division team. They gave a presentation and they explained they're targeting 30% per annum for their wealthiest clients using cash return on capital invested and the statistics they showed. And I stole the slides and they're on my great investments program. The point is, is any of that realistic? Well, only under certain very rare circumstances for our pensions. If the market has a tailwind, like in 2021 and 2023, why was I worried about this year being like 2022? Because I like up years and I'm hoping there's a tailwind. It looks like there might be this year. Can't guarantee it, but it looks like there might be something of a tailwind this year, which that's fine. That makes me happy. If the stocks you have are high sortino, which means high average return versus very little risk to the downside, how do you work that out? Well, you just, it's data. It's there, right? High average return divided by the risk or volatility of missing it. And I showed you on here, I want high sortino, high alpha. What does high alpha mean? It means when the market goes up, they go up more. And when the market falls, they don't go down as much. That's alpha. It's asymmetric risk. And Ray Dalio talks about this on TikTok a lot. He's the world's largest hedge fund manager. Um, Ray Dalio talks about asymmetric risk. That's what alpha is. And I want a bunch of alpha stocks, but I need all of this uh, ticked off. Okay, we need all of those things. So it's only going to happen if you've got high sortino, high alpha. So these are 10 requirements that you've got to have. It's not going to happen with the UK. You just don't have a market big enough. You don't have enough statistical uh, things to pick from, not emerging markets because they're down. Uh, I'm not saying US only, but yeah, US only. Uh, if you can go to cash in a bad year like 2022, and I showed you the meta example, that's critical. You're not going to get 40% per annum on average if those down years, you can't hold cash. Now, your fund manager IFA will never, you could put a gun to them, hold them hostage, probably inappropriate, uh, but you get my point, and they will not go to cash. They'll say, oh, no, I'll find something else. I'll find something, because guess what? They don't get paid fees if they go into cash, and they're not allowed anyway. So they're going to screw you. They're going to have you go up for six years while the market rises. All boats rise in a rising tide. And then in the sixth year when the market falls, they're going to have cost you six years' worth of gains. Don't take my word for it. Just pull your pension out and get angry. Uh, if you monitor once a fortnight, 
you need to monitor because just in case anything like i don't know ravi if you're on here i can't remember um ravi had picked crocs he joined the great investments program picked crocs and it went up 250 percent within a few months and because he was monitoring he could exit that when it dropped x percent he sold y to suit his uh, risk appetite we didn't know what was going to happen with crocs that year as it happened it went all the way back to zero gains but luckily he'd got out because if it dropped X, he sold Y. So just monitor it for five minutes. You need to do that. If you do not do that, you will not get anywhere near that 40% because you'll have given it all up. Good years need to make up for bad, like 2023 and 2021. Great years, they make up for 2022. You can't do anything in 2022. You had to hold cash. You were making single-digit returns. Sorry. Okay, you might say, oh, no, but something must have gone up. Yeah, some sort of uranium mining oil company looking for sunken ships in the South China Sea might have gone up, right? Uh, Crokey, I've mentioned, you're looking at 12 months. If you're going to keep trading it and sort of looking at the roots and saying, oh, uh, how's the plant doing? You're going to ruin your portfolio. So we're talking 40, okay? If sell anything which drops, 25% from the highest it's been, so you've got an insurance policy as well, then it happens. How did we do last year? Well, Let's see. Um, now, I got this email, and I show this to people because it's a warning to all pensioners. December 19th. Okay, good morning, Al Pesh. Legal and general pension uh, provided by my employer. Oh, my God. The information was stocking 20% growth between 2012 and 2022. 20%, not per annum, in total. Now, I've got a theory that employers pick workplace pensions, which are crap. I used to be, as a barrister, I used to be. Um, I used to do pensions law uh, at um, Seven Stone Buildings in uh, Lincoln's Inn. And one of the issues which would come up was underperformance of pensions. Anyway, I think employers don't want your pension to go up 55% like the NASDAQ because you might leave. They actually would prefer it if you get absolutely rubbish performance because you're then locked in. I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but now I've come to the conclusion, I think that's actually what they want. Now, this same lady, she could have over that same 10 years, if she just tracked an index, forget me trying to improve her by 10%, she had just the NASDAQ, she would have gone up 482,000 pounds from 100,000. Now, let's say she didn't have that, because NASDAQ's pretty, you know, if you're in your 30s, you're probably going to be NASDAQ heavy in your stock picks, 30s, early 40s. Maybe she was more in her 40s, so she might track the S&P 500 a bit broader, a bit safer. Then, okay, her pension's gone from 100 to 266,000. What did she get? She didn't even get a copy of the UK markets, which would have brought her up by 24K in 10 years. <laughs> Rubbish. But anyway, she didn't even get that. She didn't even get that, poor dear. Uh, so we turned that around for her. Essentially, my approach, very disciplined, and I suggest you take such an approach, is you want value, box tick, growth, dividend deals, cash flow. You might put everything in there from social media, media articles. You need to put all 10,000 stocks in there, my friends. Okay. And then you filter it to tick all those boxes, as I've shown you, until you get 15 to 20 stocks that you're happy with right, which tick those boxes in, you hold them for 12 months, and then you repeat with that stop loss that I told you. If it drops X, you sell Y, but if it drops 25%, X is 25, then Y has to be 100, because otherwise you're going to have limitless losses, okay? How did we do? Now, I've got to give you some disclaimers for last year. The market was up 25% on the S&P. I can't take credit for that. We had a tailwind. In a tailwind, our types of companies, undervalued, high growth, tend to do incredibly well right? When there's a headwind, like in 2022, all they do is they don't rise. So you end up having to sell them like Meta being a good example. I can't go, if everything falls, I can't invent a company and make it go up. Okay. And don't forget, this is for my pension and my wife and son's pension. The following are US. I'm going to show you. Um, I do display London Stock Exchange, European stocks, I just don't buy them because you'll know if you read my Financial Times columns, I only buy US ones. Our further filtered final list, these were from our further filtered final list, MACD rising, I've shown you what that is, the quality five uh, and special situations, okay, from January. So these are 12 month holdings, it's January to December. It's not the ones which were picked later in the year, which might have done incredibly well and doesn't include overweighting. So it's just assuming they were all equally weighted. And it doesn't include any leverage, which I had, uh, because that would then 
have produced an even better performance, which isn't fair because leverage is uh, suitable to me, not necessarily to others. It was not a typical year. Last year was not a typical year. People go, well, you typically get, well, I'm not a bloody bank, mate. You know, um, there isn't an interest rate on the stock market. Much of 2022, for instance, was in cash, thankfully, because the market fell 20% does not mean any will be held into 2024. So please don't read these as recommendations or any of this as financial advice because it's not. I don't know you personally, so I can't give you financial advice. So what were they? There were these, okay? And they did ridiculously well. They went up 80%. That'll make up for a few bad years. And people go, yeah, it's not, they didn't all equally do well. No, you had tapestry. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. That's right. Despite all of that, that's what happened. Now, look, at the end of the year, you want them to have fallen off your approved list because you want them to have got overvalued or whatever else, right? And some still stayed on. <laughs> Despite all of that, they just kept on earning. And yes, some of them became incredibly volatile. That's fine. Uh, uh, but that's what had happened. Those are the ones. Now, when you take a bottom-up data-driven approach, one of the things that you find that happens is you come across companies you've never heard of, like Sterling, I'd never heard of. Actually, until a couple of years ago, I'd never, until 2001, never even heard of service now. But remember, this is January to December, further filtered with rising MACD and quality stocks. The quali oh, MedPace was another one I hadn't heard of, right? This is how you sack an IFA. I'm not going to read that, but that's the letter. So we drafted one for somebody in 11 years, I'll be 67 years old. Uh, basically, you're telling the IFA, forget it. The NASDAQ was up 55% last year. The S&P, 25%. You've given me 5%. Go away. You're sacked. That's it. Now, people say to me, some people say, and they might be total beginners, how, push, how do I do any of this? Well, the government wants you to have your own pension and your own ISA in a tax-free wrapper. Yeah, it's a tax avoidance scheme. It's legal, right? It's called a SIP or an ISA. SIP, 60,000 pounds can go in it. I said 20,000 can, right? You go to, I've mentioned Barclays. It's not an advertisement for them. I don't have an affiliation or relationship to them. Uh, it's simple. It's like opening a bank account. You open it. You might do a transfer from an old pension. They do it for you. Not just Barclays, Hargreaves, Dansdale, AJ Bell, Halifax, pick any of them. They all do it for you. Free trade. They'll transfer it from your old one. They, you fill in the form. They transfer it from whoever you've got it with. One caveat, if you're a civil servant or a in a defined benefit, never transfer your pension. They're gold. Keep those. Uh, final salary pensions, keep those. Never transfer them. Never do them yourself. Because final salary or defined benefit, they're brilliant. Okay? Um, look, that's from Free Trade. I've taken that one. Uh, I c I'm not endorsing any. I'm just saying they're all much of a much. And, and, and it's easy. You just transfer now. You fill in the form and they go, where's your existing uh, pension? Oh, it's with so-and-so. You don't even need to talk to your existing provider. They'll just call them and say, listen, mate, sling your hook. You're out of here. Uh, some cost comparisons. Okay. Uh, but check these out. That's That's got a cap. So that looks worse than it is. Um, it's not that bad. Okay. These are all pretty much much of a muchness. I and mean, it's tenor here or there. When you're making thousands, who cares? Uh, and for those who don't know, this is really basic, how to buy a stock. You then, once you've got your SIP, you go online. You say, I want to buy a stock in a company. Buy. 500 pounds worth of that stock and it goes into your account through your SIP. That's it. Okay. It's that simple. Uh, we also started using AI picks. Now, remember Broadcom? I said this wasn't one of mine. It came up with AI. AI came up with it. I posted this on May the 2nd on Telegram and it went up 83%. We're going to continue with some of these AI picks into 2024, see what happens. Don't go nuts with them, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with those. And this is what I want to warn you against 50% loss on name recognition fund. I've written an article in the FT, the Financial Times, a while back. Uh, most people pick stocks based on, uh, uh, based on Scottish mortgage, uh, uh, based on Scottish mortgage being well known name. They lost 50% of your pension. Okay, I'm going to answer your questions in a second. Okay, so I will do this right. So just a reminder, valuation, I want you to look at either price earnings, price earnings growth, I don't care which, growth, you've got to look at revenue and sales growth and profits growth, dividend deals. Okay, if you're not doing this, then there's a problem because it's it's the least that needs to be done. It's the least that needs to be done. Value growth, income, cash, Sortino, alpha. Monitor infrequently. If you monitor it every day, you're screwed because you're going to go, going to give yourself a heart attack. Mitten, you know what I'm talking about when you first joined the Great Investments Program, you were looking at it almost every day. 
uh, once every two weeks should be fine. 12 month period, 15 to 40 stocks. If it drops 25% from the highest it's been since you bought it, get the hell out of there. One strategy, okay, which is the one I've just told you, value growth income. You might have tactics uh, within that, like, oh, I'll only pick ones which meet all of that and, you know, I'll push likes. I don't know. You might have something tactical. Uh, now, you're going to have between 15 to 40 stocks. After 40, you are just wasting everybody's time. So be careful. Uh, you're just going to have bureaucracy. Uh, under 15, you're just taking too much individual company-specific risk. Now, assume you plan to invest in 10. Oh, by the way, when I show this, people go, ah, they have a heart attack because they've learned something in the 1960s. That, But what about diversification? What if all 15 were in the same sector? Let me tell you something about diversification. When the markets go up, you certainly don't want diversification for a simple reason. You want concentration, like a Bill Gates portfolio or a Warren Buffett one, because diversification would imply you want some things to go down. You don't want that when the markets go up, and they go up five years out of six. So you want diversification in the one year out of six that the market falls. Guess what? And I've written about this in my books, is the markets are highly correlated on the downside. They get more correlated when the market when it falls. In other words, a bat flaps its wings in China, we'll get COVID. In other words, Costco, the retailer, falls at the same time as Microsoft, the AI cloud company. Okay, so when you need diversification the most, you don't get it, right? So what you've learned in the 1960s when computers didn't exist and information traveled the world very, very slowly and there weren't airplanes to carry viruses from one place to the other, what you learned back then about diversification in different sectors in the UK worked out fine. It was the 1960s. Don't use that knowledge today, which is what your IFA does. Now, let's say you plan to invest over 20 years. Let's say I could improve your results through this education by 20%. That's a big ask. But I've shown you some ways in which that happens. Some years more, some years maybe less. But on average, that much. Let's say you've got 100K and you plan to add a bit, because you would, in your SIPs and ISAs, then that turns 100 into a million over 10 years. 10, 100, million. 10 years, 100K, million, right? That's the goal. Now, it's not going to be that smooth and simple, because some years, like last year, the market's going to go up 55 bloody percent, and then the next year, it's going to go flatline like 2022. So it could you know, sort of do all sorts of crazy stuff. Your goal is between years nine and 10 is to be making more money from your pension growth than you are in your salary. Now, what breaks my heart is I'll get people going, yeah, but I own Shell and I got it for the dividends. I don't care that the price hasn't gone up. I'll make 5% a year in the dividends. That's fine. It's a form of retirement poverty, but it's fine. Um, it's an old way of thinking, suitable to the 1950s and 60s, but it's fine. You're happy with doing that. Uh, I'm not. I'm from a generation who wants a hell of a lot more return, okay? Uh, I, I said I've got no connections to Barclays. I haven't. They did my book launch, but that was all. Uh, okay? Those are some of the books I've written in which I've put all this content and more. That's just half of them. There's about 18 out there. Okay. And one of the big reasons is I've been on a crusade and a mission to say you can be overpaid fund managers. And I did it publicly in the FT because they asked me, all right, big mouth, do it. And I said, I'll do it on one condition. I'll prove it to you over a 12-month period. And when I do do it, please put my face on the front cover of your newspaper. Uh, and that was the one who got came 14th above the cat. Okay, and they gave him 9.2 billion pounds because that's what we do in Britain. We reward failure. Okay, if you have a bad software system in the post office, we will reward you with bonuses. Uh, but the people who are doing the good work in the sub post now will put you in prison. That's how it works. It's the law. Okay, so he screwed up more pensions, more and more pensions. Why is he not in prison? We don't put people in prison for destroying pensions. Are you kidding? <laughs> when was the last time any person got put in prison for destroying a pension? Don't happen. Now, tactics I mentioned. Tactics are just more like, okay, you've got your strategy. You, you need to find a way of tie-breaking the stocks. So I don't do it based on... I'm not buying Warren Buffett's portfolio because he owns it. I'm doing it because, okay, I liked a particular stock because it ticked my boxes or it was one of my quality five, okay, uh, Microsoft or uh, the Apple, let's say, 
okay? Um, that's why. So I'm showing these. Now, look at the concentration. I don't know if you can see this. 50% is in Apple, then 9% is in Bank of America. By the time you get to his eighth largest holding, he's got 2% in there. By the time you get to Bill Gates's eighth largest holding, he's only holding 1% in there. In other words, there's an immense concentration. It's the old Warren Buffett saying, put all your eggs in one basket, watch the basket. But if you're ignorant, and you don't have the data and don't know what you're doing, then follow the other Warren Buffett saying, which is spray and pray. No, his other saying is uh, diversification is an insurance policy for ignorance. Okay, so diversify in that case, buy bloody everything you can get your hands on, if you don't know what you're doing, because hopefully something will be all right, and you won't destroy your money on just one thing it saves you from yourself. But that's not for me because I've got the data and I know what the hell I'm doing. So simple as that. That was the croaky one. That's the slide from Goldman's, one of the slides at the whole booklet I stole from their quantum database team. Uh, it's Most people don't know this, but banks, just like any other company, have R&D divisions, research and development. For Goldman Sachs, it's the global investment research team and it's the quantum database within there. Okay, and this is croaky. Cash return on capital invested, basically cash flow over capital invested and what they discovered is 30 percent per annum not every year in 2008 nobody got that uh but that's what the companies in the top quartile did total shared returns company in the sector in each sector relative croaky quartile okay that was it and that was incredibly important um some some sectors did better uh some did worse but that was what was important that you did right and i've told you this already that's the rule that's the one which protects you from one in six years. It gets you to keep your money. It's all very well for five years, the market going up. Making money is not the problem. In a rising market, everybody makes money. It's when the market falls, it's the ability to keep the money. That is the differentiator. And as you saw with Meta, with Meta, people who kept hold of it didn't keep their money. They would back down snakes and ladders all the way back down six years. Okay. And when it went back up, they were only back to where they started off with. Uh, 18 months ago. So they've got a 0% return over 18 months in any event. Okay, that I don't need to go into. And I've explained, this is a typical bad portfolio that I get sent when I do portfolio rev reviews. A bunch of UK stocks, which haven't been doing too well. And then a bucket load. You might recognize some of these names because your IFA has probably put you in some of these. Okay, um, an absolute spray and pray. And each one of these funds, the equity ones, will have about 50 to 100 stocks in them. And they're going to screw you over. Here's another one where somebody had sent it in. Last two years, 0% return in a, in, at a time when you saw what happened with Meta. You can see why they got a 0% return. But the problem was 55% up on the NASDAQ and they got a 0% return. And you know why? Even though they had some US international equity stuff, uh, they just got dragged down by, whoops, by everything else. And. At 63, you got 473. Okay. You've still got some time. Hopefully in the next seven years. That could hopefully go to 1.5 million, uh, and then it's a lot better. Even if it doubled to a million, the person would be happy because doubtless, uh, given what's in here, that's probably been stagnant for 10 years, okay? And most of it is just the the, the contributions the individual made. Then Bruin Dolphin came up, 1,000 different companies. This is an email I got on uh, Christmas. Uh <laughs> I reviewed that one and I put videos on of all these reviews. This is another one. This is somebody who had 4.2 million. And here the danger was that they just had, it wasn't that they had a load of funds. It was just that it there wasn't really an exit strategy. Okay, well, what are you going to do with some of these? There were some good picks, but what are you going to do in terms of what's the exit plan? And they were worried that, okay, what do I do? going forward. Um, let me tell you something that we've created to help people. And I've given you a lot of education there. And by the way, you can download a free copy of this from alpishpatel.com forward slash link. So you're going to get a free copy for those on TikTok of that from alpishpatel.com forward slash links. Okay. But for those of you who want the, um, the really special, uh, special stuff behind the vault stuff, okay, who want this done for them, Right. And this is somebody I tra I can train anybody to be a fund manager. She left university with an English literature degree, worked for me straight out of university for two years, and then uh, went to Newton Investment Management, now manages several billion at Polar Capital. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm a man. I'm going to take credit for the hard work of a woman. But what I'm saying is you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You can be an English graduate and I can train you up to be a fund manager. Right. Most of the people 
most of the people say, can you do it for me? And I say, no, I don't. That's the whole point. You can do it. You can have the transparency of all the data. You can have the power of the knowledge, and then you can do it, okay? And then you don't have to pay anybody any bloody fees. Now, I started all of this way back. I mean, improved upon it when I was at university. One competition to prove the point, wrote about it, wrote about it in the Financial Times columns, wrote about it in the Financial Times books, Okay. Most people said, look, this is what we want. And we thought, well, is there something we can spin out? Can we create, this is a trillion dollar industry. Can we create a multi-million pound, if not a billion pound business, an alternative asset management company where you keep your own money? We don't manage it. Nobody manages it for you. You do it, but you're given the data and the education, no ongoing fees and access to the expertise one-to-one. All the things you don't get with your IFA or your pension. They don't let you get to the fund manager. They don't give you the data. They don't give you the education. They don't give you the information. They don't give you the unlimited calls and they keep charging you bloody fees. So I thought, well, can we turn it on its head? If we did that, would that be the Amazon of uh, asset management in the sense that you just focus on the client, client, client and what they want? So we put that together and we think out of coming from the hedge fund industry, we already know more than the retail fund managers. We thought that could be an alternative type of asset management company where we can get we can be global. And now we've got clients from San Francisco and, and Bermuda, all the way, sorry, Bahamas, all the way to New Zealand. And it's the approach that I take whenever I'm on TV anyway. And my idea and the goal I tell people is within one hour of signing up, within one hour of the, me taking them through the onboarding call and taking them through all of this, they can take my place on the BBC and be able to give a credible answer on why one stock is better than another based on its value, its growth, its income, its cash flows, its croaky, why that's important, its Sortino, why that's important, and its alpha. And there'll be a credible answer that you could give. They can take my place. And I had a client this morning and I said to him, what do you think? And he said, actually, yeah, I feel really confident. Okay. And I'm blessed to have had from my industry peers, from, you know, everything from the FT to American Express and everybody else, uh, some very good reviews on that, as well as individuals on there. So our ambition is to create an alternative asset management company and to prove the point to venture capitalists and then get get it up to the valuation of about 30 million. Um, my ambition is to take 250 people on. We're about 200 who are on, 210 probably who are on. Get it up to 250 and then get venture capitalists and, and so on uh, on board. But the idea is for the first 250, I would be the mentor because it's my baby and I want to make sure it's very successful for the first 250. And then we might have other people for other people um, and no ongoing charges for the first 250 ever. For others later on, there might be. And thanks to technology, you can do this now. You can have those Zoom calls. And so what we do is if you want us to do that for you, I've taught you how to do it yourself very briefly in this with the market update, but if you want us to do it for you, and my ambition is to create a billion dollar company in this. And I think it can be done because it's a trillion dollar industry with a massive, massive problem. Uh, fund managers are absolutely destroying people's wealth. That's the problem. They're absolutely destroying people's wealth. Uh, uh, and so that's the ambition. And if you want to join, and I'm going to answer the Q&A now, then we had to think, well, where do we price this? You know, you could have a 15% uplift on a 100K portfolio. Do you do it there? And then somebody's made 15K in a year. Um, but we're not going to charge them ongoing fees. Not for the first 250 people anyway. We're not going to charge them. Uh, uh, and we're at about 210 on it. And we take 10 at a time onto this to prove the concept and improve their pensions. And we have had phenomenal reviews from all of them, as you can see on there. And give them not just the data, but what most of them want is access to me. So somebody said, oh, great, the data is the most valuable. And then somebody else says, no, access to you is most valuable, what you're buying, what you like. And I said, no, actually, it's the knowledge, access to me and the data, but the not, no ongoing fees is what's really important so that you keep all your money, okay? So on a, if you've got a million portfolio, 10% is 100K you've made. On a 100K portfolio, you've made 10K in a year, right? If we get a 10% improvement, but you've got it for life. The idea is you've got this for life. On a 500K portfolio, 20% improvements, 100K you've made into your pension. But you've got this for life. And the great thing is we've got a load of reviews of people who've been on so far. Now, I think I can get venture capital investment on this at about 30 or 40 million pound valuation. That's my problem, my business. And the eventual idea is to float it as an alternative asset manager where you manage your own money with the broker of your choice, but you've got the data and the education to do it. So you're truly empowered and you don't have to keep paying asset managers. 
because like I said, it's a global bloody problem. People aren't getting the returns. So we've priced it at the moment at this. It keeps going up, by the way, just so, so you know. Uh, now do it at 24 installments. If you want installments, you can pay in one go, but 24 installments on that if you want to join. Like I said, the ambition is I think this can be a multi-billion dollar company um, given that the the asset management business is broken. I've never heard somebody say they've ever got a decent IFA. Um, if you want to join, it is 10 at a time only per webinar because I've got to onboard you and handhold you. It's membership for life, uh, all the data for life, all the data that you've seen, all of this for life and unlimited calls with me for life. That's why it's capped to the first 250. Okay. And the webinar discount is on there. Um, if the webinar discount doesn't come up, just put in that coupon to get the 40% off. I'm going to answer some questions now. Is this program for people who've got a million plus, I guess, um, only have 80K to play with at the moment? 80 might be a little bit low, Stan, only because let's say you improve by 10%, then you make 8K. So let's say you improve by 20%, you make 16K extra than you otherwise would have done. So if you make 16K, it'll take you one and a half years to make the cost of it back, one and a half years. And you might say, well, one and a half years is fine because I've got you for the next 10 years. That's the way you've got to do the calculation. Only you can answer that. Um, it's a, oh yeah, it's a devil's part. I didn't think of that. 1666, Stan Revelations. Um, is there someone I can watch a recording? Of? Yeah, um, uh, I will email you. So if you're on there, uh, you'll get the, it'll be on alpishpatel.com forward slash latest shares will be the latest webinar. Uh, okay. Nicholas, you're in Bermuda. That's it. Bermuda. Why did I say Bahamas? And it was you. I was thinking of Nicholas as well. Uh, has Woodford been sacked yet? No, he still goes around uh, trying to get clients. If I had to read through your books, what would you say your top three? Will, don't even worry about three. I'd say investing on plugs. You can get that for free. Go to alpishpatel.com forward slash links. And uh, Mind of a Trader, uh, where I interviewed the world's leading traders when I was at um, university, because uh, that's I do the investing and the trading side. Uh, and you can download that for free now as well. It was published by the Financial Times. I don't need the royalties. You can download it for free. If you go to arpishpatel.com forward slash links, just a tip for any realized losses, you can claim this loss against your tax bill. Thank you, Ravi. Ravi's an accountant. You should, if you've got anything where you need accountancy help, go to Ravi. He's brilliant. Um, I've never met a more passionate accountant, I've got to say. Um, plus, he hangs out with the chancellor, mate. Jay, should I buy into Meta? Been waiting for a pullback, but it's not falling. Uh, awesome advice, Ravi. Is this the case even within ISA's? Um, no, ISA's are tax free, so a loss within an ISA wouldn't couldn't be offset against uh, anything outside of an ISA. Two weeks or so to transfer. Um, Jay, on the Meta side, should he buy into Meta? Um, I think it's trading at too high a level at the moment. I hold, I'm holding, but you might say I want to buy into Meta or a Tesla or an Nvidia because you want for your sake, do a strategy different to mine, which is you just want a strategic holding because you think I've got FOMO. But you're going to have to have an exit strategy for it, which is if it falls X, you'll sell Y. And the problem with that is if it's already quite high up, you might end up selling it quite soon. That's the only concern. But you might say, well, I've got too much FOMO, so I'm going to do it. That's a different strategy. Luckily, I've got in earlier and therefore it's a you know i've already in there but i'm not buying more let's put it that way at this stage how do you allocate multi deposits and uh would that affect how long you hold for so let's say monthly wise um let's say it's january and i've got some money to allocate then let's say february i get more money now i can either say well i know in february i'm going to get more money so i'll just basically dollar cost average and put the same amount of money into each of the 15 stocks or five stocks or whatever. Or you can say, well, I'm going to buy a different basket of stocks. Now, that's going to increase your bureaucracy. You're going to have to open a separate tab for February uh, and do that. So that's essentially it. That's how you would end up doing it with money coming in during the year. You would have different pots running at different timelines because it's 12-month holdings, and you treat them separately. Or you would treat it as one, but dollar cost averaging and saying, no, I'm going to put the money in the same batch. Um, and that would... But the, the trick is organization you'd organize yourself into tabs on an excel so you the worst thing i've seen people do and they do this consistently is they become so disorganized they forgot why they bought something and therefore they don't know when to sell it that's the problem that's the problem okay um 
Apple doesn't tick. It's one of my quality five. Remember, it's about when we started. So if I buy something in January and it ticks all five boxes, I'm holding it for 12 months. If in February it falls out of the approved list, I don't trade out of it. We're still holding for 12 months. Otherwise, we'd do what Warren Buffett said never to do, which is keep taking the plant out to look at the roots. Okay, um, Spencer, so hopefully that explains it. Alpesh, I know you can't talk about special situation stock. Can you blink twice if you reckon that NVIDIA is preparing to take profit? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, Stan, are you on the program? If you are, I'll cover NVIDIA tonight. Um, but with uh, it doesn't matter whether NVIDIA or Meta or anybody else are preparing to take profit and crash. If it drops X, sell Y. Determine what Y is on your risk appetite. That's the answer. Because otherwise, what you're actually asking me is, can you see into the future? No, I can't. NVIDIA looks like it'll drop any minute. Yeah, it does. It also looks like it'll soar any minute. Yes, it does. And if it drops X, sell Y. Uh, and the reason I've got such a big gain in NVIDIA is not because I knew it was going to go up. I didn't. It's not because I knew about AI. I didn't even know about that. It was on our approved filtered list in January last year. And then it never dropped Y percent, X percent. It never dropped X percent. So we just kept holding it. And we're like fools going, oh, okay. And there are many times you follow my broadcast, I thought it was going to drop. And it didn't. So I didn't have anything to do. And it kept going up. So I'm like, okay, fine. If it drops X, sell Y. Uh, it's a good position in the market. Does it have any good momentum? Sorry, Mithun. Hey, Alpesh, being in India at the moment. Uh, have a look at the ETFs on the approved filtered list. Um, have a look at the filtered ETFs on India. Um, the ETFs, Indian ETFs are available in the UK. Mithun, you're on the program. You know where the ETFs are. <laughs> Let me know. Um, if you need me to send you a screenshot. You're on the program. They're on the approved list. There are a tab. It says ETFs, and it's got filtered, and it's got some of the Indian ones on there that you can buy in the UK, my friend. Uh, so have a look at those because we've, we've filtered those by Sortino and Alpha as well. So Disney is weight. Uh, yeah, bottom line. Um, I bought back into Scottish mortgage in August 23 and 15%. Yeah, you bought back in. Bloody hell. That's like saying I lost 50%. These guys absolutely screwed me and then I gave them more money later. That's like going back to the scene of the mugging, finding the muggers and saying, do you want some more? All right. There is a more serious point I'm making. That was flippant. There is a serious point. Um, I used to lecture on behavioral finance at Oxford University at Corpus Christi College in 2001, um, 2001, 2002. And people like to make the money back from the same securities in which they lost it. It's a bit like people like to go back to the screen of the crime, which is why police often capture people uh, after a crime coming back to it. Uh, 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 there's something psychologically messed up about humans. There's a lot messed up about humans. Look at social media. Um, but the behavioral scientists have done research on this, in particular Daniel Kahneman uh, on this. And as I say, he won with he won the Nobel Prize in Economics. I, most of his work was done with uh, another um, Israeli called Amos Tversky. And Amos sadly passed away, so he wasn't eligible for the prize. But the Tversky and Kahneman stuff, showed that people just make these biases, which is why I did two TEDx talks, one of which was called last year called, uh, if you're so clever, why aren't you rich? And it highlighted some of these problems. People will go back to the scene of where they lost the money to try and make it back from the same thing, which is crazy because they're saying, I'm not going to go from a narrow gene pool. Bitcoin ETF didn't really work out as planned. It nearly dropped 20%. I thought it would have pushed it higher. What's your thoughts on Bitcoin ETF? Um, the whole Bitcoin ETF thing and Bitcoins is, look, with Bitcoin, I think anything with Bitcoin is you hold it for 20 years or 10 years, 10 years, and then look at it. Either it's worth zero or it's worth a lot. But if you keep looking at it in the short term, I don't think that's sensible um, unless you've got a more specific strategy. It's buy and hold and uh, that's it uh, because it's, 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 that's the nature of Bitcoin, isn't it? I'm not a Bitcoin expert. Would you buy PayPal now? Nope. Uh, Stan Alpish, we will start covering different industries, not just Magnet Seven. Uh, desperately need some tips for poor investors. No, I do, I do, I do. Ross, hi. Could a retail investor create a screening spreadsheet like yours? Reasonably easy. Do you need to pay big fees for the info? Um, I mean, you could try. Look at say Yahoo Finance. Um, I think they used to do that, and 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 try and do it through that, um, which should be free. I can't do lower than free, Roz. Uh, Mithun, hey, been reading Meta is looking to buy NVIDIA chips. Do you think this could help push them both? Right, Mithun, that's an important point. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not buying and trading and gambling on news. I need to look at the financials. You know what the process is. Stick to the process. The numbers look good. 
don't be fooled by the noise. It's not just me saying it. Warren Buffett says it as well. He says, look, focus on what you can see. Okay. For those on the program, yes, I'm afraid the prices are due to rise in the next 30 days without notice. Again, if you get joined now, you won't be affected. Okay. Um, these are the things on the program. So it's a different way of doing asset management. It's where you keep control of your money. You get the data and you get the expertise and you don't have ongoing fees. It is the exact opposite. It's everything they don't do at the moment. That was not typical. That was last year, 2023, January to December. This was not typical. It was 2021. Again, it wasn't typical. It's not a typical year, 2021. You only don't need to take my word for it. You just need to look at the markets. Crocs, that was one of yours. Um, uh, I think you bought into that, Robbie, uh, uh and it's a good case study to show people. Okay, uh, so that's where we are with it. Thank you all. And this, the edu the funny thing is, most people don't want the education. I'd say only ten percent want the education. Everybody else wants the data and me. Uh, uh, and that's good, and that's fine. And for the first two hundred and fifty, they get me, uh, as well as all of this. Okay, some more questions. Hi, Stan. Should I three times meta tomorrow? Um, tech stocks going to the moon. Um, it's very different to nineteen ninety nine in the sense that you've got profits and earnings this time. Good evening from Scott. So that's it. Any questions I've missed, I'm going to go. Thoughts behind purchase of CVS? Um, Monday, yeah, still holding. 12 month holdings. Simple. It's 12 months. Too early. Thanks so much. See you in the next webinar. Thank you. Would you buy anything leveraged at the moment? Yes, Jack. And that's scary because um, I've got to give the caveat with leverage. <sighs> Don't do this is the, leverage, uh, is the caveat I've got to give. But leverage, yes, I've got quite a few leveraged positions, including in Microsoft. Uh, okay, but that doesn't mean you all go run and do it. You should not be doing leverage. Can I just put that out there officially for the record? None of you should be doing leverage because I don't know who you are. You know, you might be some 70 year old grandma on borrowed money. Uh, can we negotiate the price? Stan, you can try. Thanks for asking questions. I'll pay you. Oh, my pleasure, Stan. Thank you very much. Well, you were polite. Why wouldn't I? Uh, would I hold for longer if I dollar cost average? When would be too late to add more? J um, Jack, email me. Would you hold? No, you wouldn't. Uh, oh, no, I get it. So if in January you're dollar cost averaging and you put 5,000 in January and say Microsoft, 5,000 in February, 5,000 in March, your starting point is January. Okay. It's not March. It's not the date of the last payment um, into Microsoft. Alexander, someone who doesn't have capital to get into the great investment program, what would be the best way to create calculations to um, teach? Have a look at Yahoo Finance. Like I said, might be that you can do it for free. Um, thanks, Abish. Always great webinar. Thank you, Babesh. Is there any correlation between Republicans winning um, and stocks? There is actually, Mithun. You're absolutely correct, and Trump is going to win. Uh, I'll dig up the data again. I'll dig it up. Um, under the year before an election, you know, if there's a Democrat incumbent and a, and a Republican likely to win who what does the stock market do and what does it do in the first year of a republican uh etc i'll i'll dig up the data there is and it's quite interesting you said trump will win yes historically hasn't the incumbent won in years where the sb yeah it has kishan kishan you're absolutely correct you're absolutely correct the past is no guarantee of the future it is indicative but it's not a guarantee as my wife will say you just don't change alpesh that means it's indicative but it's not guaranteed. Uh, so you're absolutely correct. But I just don't think, by the way, don't, nothing turns on this consequence. Me talking about what the weather's going to be like tomorrow is not something on which you should put much weight or uh, who's going to win the election. I think it's going to be Trump. That's a bit of me for fun. It's not me saying Trump's going to win. Therefore, let me give you some tips. That's not what I'm doing. I'm telling you for fun, okay, that um, Trump's going to win. If I'm wrong, who cares? It's not um, to do with investments and all the rest of it, because I don't want people thinking, um, oh, okay, uh, uh, this, I don't know, there's something more in it than what I've told you. Uh, KP, possibly underhand tactics in the USA election scares me and possible impact on the US stock market. Um, well, that's why we have the process we have, because like you, I want a good night's sleep. So what I say is I do the Wednesday update, the Friday update, and I'm looking at the S&P on those two days, and I'm looking at the individual stocks that make it up to look for any warning signs. Now, as you and I know, the market doesn't go from 100 to 50 in 24 hours. So we've got ample early warnings, and we're looking, we're going, yeah, 
And that's why I keep doing the updates on the market. I'm going to go um, through this backwards. And by the way, I should say, uh, if you go on to arbitrapital.com forward slash shares two, okay, um, and I've clarified some of this stuff. So, yeah, hand-holding unlimited access call for the first 250. I sometimes hadn't clarified that, so you'd be within that group. And we've now made it, so we've had to put the price up, and it's going to go up again. Um, won't affect you if you're signing up today, but like I said, um, we've now made it 24, 12, um, and uh, 18 month. I should have specified that's 18 month, uh, but it tells you down there anyway. Uh, but yeah, 12, 24, 18. So people have got a variety. You know, some just pay up front. Others, most will do it over a period of time. Entirely up to you. Uh, but we think we're changing the way asset management works and creating alternative uh, to them. Uh, thanks, Patel. Great webinar as well. That's okay, Alfredo. Um, right, everyone, I'm going to get going. It's quarter past seven. I try and keep these to one hour, but I've actually exceeded the timelines. So thank you all, everyone. And I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget, you can send portfolio reviews and reach out to me anytime. Uh, do that on arpishpatel.com forward slash links. And to all my TikTok people, I think we're at a quarter of a million uh people thank you very much all of it i think we're over a quarter of a million now thank you all very much uh all the way up to a million coming up thank you okay um thanks everyone oh kishan now how do we know which stocks will blow up if trump wins or um do we have to go to nancy pelosi uh, i don't gamble on that that's not a strategy for me if trump wins who blows up it's not a strategy that i could adopt so i don't adopt it I don't even know how I do it. Thank you, Kishan. It's my pleasure. Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I love it. And I love the feedback. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to get going now. Um, was there anything that I haven't shown? No, I think I've done everything. Uh, yeah, I think I've shown everything. Okay. Uh, thanks, y'all. I'm going to get going. And uh, I will speak to you all very soon, I hope. Thank you.